Big focus this hour is on the infrastructure push uh, once again by the Union Government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated the Sela Tunnel as part of his day-long visit to Arunachal Pradesh. This is the world's longest twin lane tunnel which has been constructed at an estimated cost of 825 crore rupees and aims to facilitate rapid military deployment from Tezpur to Tawang near the line of actual control with China. Well, uh, the Sela Tunnel is the world's longest bi-lane tunnel at an elevation exceeding 13,000 feet. The tunnel provides all-weather connectivity, overcoming challenges posed by snowfall and lands landslides on the Balipara Chariudwar Tawang border. Now, executed by the Border Roads Organization, the project uh, features two tunnels and a linked road. The tunnel one is 1,303 uh, meters long, single tube tunnel, while the other tunnel two is a 1,555 meter long twin tube tunnel with one bilane tube for traffic and the other emergencies. The linked road between these two tunnels spans 1,200 meters. The foundation stone for the Sela Tunnel project was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 9th of February 2019. And it took a whole of 90 lakh man hours, contributions of 650 works and laborers to construct with engineering marvel. In fact, it's even equipped with ventilation systems, robust lighting and firefighting mechanisms. Well, we are going to be delving into the infrastructural developments for Andhra Pradesh and of course the PM's vision for this magnificent state with our special guest. Joining us at this point is Lieutenant General PJS Panu, former Deputy Chief IDS. We also have Major General Gigi Devedi, Strategic Affairs Analyst joining us live. Madhav Nalapath, Editorial Director of the Sunday Guardian is live with us. We also have Vijay Kranti, Internal Affairs Expert. Let me uh, quickly bring you in here first. Lieutenant General Panu, on uh, this uh, Sela Tunnel, what stands out uh, in it according to you and how crucial uh, is it now going to be now that it is formally inaugurated? Left General Panu, can you hear me? Okay, I think we're having some audio trouble there with uh, his connection. Let me try and bring in Major General Devedi. If he can hear me, Major General Devedi, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, Mitchell Devedi, uh, your uh, uh, interpretation of this uh, big inauguration today, what stands out for you in this tunnel design and the tunnel uniqueness? Well, Uday, if you see the mountains, it's all about uh, time and space. That is how quickly uh, you can deploy your combat fighting potential. Uh, to that extent, I think infrastructure is the key. Uh, having served in this uh, sector, in fact, uh, just between Bombdila and uh, Misamari, my battalion was deployed for more than two years. So I can give you the first-hand insight into what this tunnel means, how is it going to impact on our fighting capability, and how exactly is going to change the overall game plan in this sector. You know. Tuang is a strategically very important area in 1962 war. Uh, this was one of the main focus of action where Chinese came in and uh, our fourth infantry division uh, was uh, actually routed in this area and Chinese came right up to Bomdila. And uh, when I was there, we used to take two days for us to go from Tejpur to Tuang. Now with this <laughs> tunnel, What's going to happen is our reaction time, our logistics, our build-up is going to get tremendous momentum and tremendous impetus. The second point is that Chinese have been at the building of infrastructure in Tibet, or especially opposite our natural position, right since 1950. And this was one reason in 1962 war, they got a upper edge because they had very good infrastructure development. So all I can say is that infrastructure is the key and the sailor tunnel will give us tremendous both tactical and strategic advantage and this needs to be actually taken forward all across Arunachal Pradesh, especially the area of Wolong because another battle, very important battle took place in 1962 in Wolong. And two important issues that we need to keep in mind. The Chinese have uh, developed Tibet as a shield and they have gone in like hammer and tong to improve the infrastructure as far airports are concerned, roads are concerned. And now they also made the border villages, about 620 of them, one third on the borders, which are well connected right up to the border post. And these are going to be actually the forward post for the Chinese. 
So therefore, I think infrastructure development is the key to security. And this tunnel at Sela is going to be of tremendous strategic advantage. And though it has come late, but it has come timely. And I think uh, the current government vision to ensure that infrastructure on the border area is given top priority, I would add the border management should be our focus and our priority because that's how we can ensure security of our border areas and line of actual control, which is being contested by the Chinese right at the present. Ude. Yes, uh, also, uh, you know, also let me uh, take that across to Madhav Nalapath as well. Uh, Professor Nalapath, on, uh, you know, uh, on this uh, particular tunnel, how big a strategic asset is it going to be now? The fact that it's, of course, been inaugurated. Also, this inauguration happening in record time. The PM, of course, prides himself on this, often says that, you know, there used to be governments who would just, you know, lay the foundation stone and forget about projects. We actually get them inaugurated and open too. Yeah, uh, uh, I would request others to mute. Uh, the, my point is very clear. The point is that this ought to have been done quite a while ago. And I'm, it's very good that it has been done now. And may I point out that right from 2014 onwards, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has made uh, the, 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 the northeast of India and the, the India-China border a priority. And he has worked very hard to develop the infrastructure there. And now that infrastructure has now reached a level where I think we can confidently say that we have the capability to take on any kind of an assault that may be mounted uh, against us on the other side. Uh, General Duvedi has, has talked about Tawang. There's no question about the strategic importance of Tawang. It's also important from the point of view of being a very important religious center. It has immense spiritual value. It is great, you know. It is it is a, a tremendous influence uh, over o, over the pop populations in several uh, parts of the region, including in Tibet. And the Tawang is therefore a cultural treasure. And may I also point out that so far, 62 war was concerned. From my limited understanding of that, well, infrastructure was definitely a problem. Another problem was that we, India, we did not use all our capabilities. For example, our Air Force. Now, even today, our Air Force got the advantage of, of flying from lower altitudes than the Chinese do. At that time, we had an overwhelming advantage, and the Air Force could have been used to very good advantage to ensure that the Chinese advance was, was, was halted. This is what I've been assured by military experts. So I'd only like to say that finally now, we have a government that has decided to put all our uh, uh, attributes into play, to develop all the attributes that we have, to develop all the advantages that we have, rather than leave them uh, just not used and not utilized. If you utilize only 20% of what you can utilize, obviously you have a problem. Now we are nearing the level in which we are utilizing 60, 70, and quite soon, probably 80% of the potential that we have in terms of both defense and in terms of securing the, 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 the border. And I think that's a very welcome sign. This particular tunnel is an example of that, Uday. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, Vijay Kranti, uh, let me bring you in here. How uh, crucial is this for Arunachal Pradesh? Obviously, this also shows the government's vision for Arunachal, the continuous development that we've been seeing uh, in the last few years for this region. Uh, you know, there is a, I would say, a qualitative and quantitative change which is happening in last 10 12 years uh, unfortunately india thanks to our previous governments has been on a defense preparedness holiday for 70 years we just did not bother to develop our border areas uh, not only for the army also for the local people we were people we were a government in those days who was which was afraid of building road right up to the border and the logic which is on record in the parliament is that if we build roads to the border chinese army will walk into india you know this was our attitude and the preparedness was in the same proportion if you contrast today's development this sela tunnel to the situation in 1950s as uh, just now general uh, uh, the way they pointed out, 
just remember the case when Chinese annexed uh, Aksai Chin without our knowledge and they built a 1200 kilometer road through that and our Prime Minister refused to even uh, put on record that Chinese have made a road. It was only it came on record when Chinese embassy, Chinese government gave an invitation to Indian embassy in Peking. Those days Beijing was called Peking to participate in the inauguration of this Karakoram road. And the reaction of our prime minister and foreign ministry was asking China, how could you your how could your labor go there without Indian visa? This is the attitude of uh, what we have been doing for the last 70 years. So that is why we suffered in 1962. But now, thank God, there is a change in national attitude. There is the right government. And Modi has had declared right from day one that he will connect every single Indian post to the uh, rest of India. And Sela is one of a very, very high points of that. Uh, in my opinion, it is not only going to be a great asset for the military, as uh, General uh, Dwedi just now pointed out, it is going to be a great help for the people of Northeast, of Arunachal Pradesh. It will connect them to the rest of India for whole year. And then you will see the integration of the development process and the emotional relation with the Northeast. So I think today is a very high point and a turning point for this country which should send the right message to China and the rest of the world that we are serious about the territorial integrity of our place, of our country, and we mean it. So I, I, I see it as a very great point. And, and the one thing, we should salute today the Border Road Organization. You know, the way they have executed these plans in some of the most difficult conditions across the world, the, they are commendable. The workers, the leadership of uh, uh, Border Road Organization deserves a national salute, especially today. Yes. Uh, let me uh, attempt to go back across to General Pannu if, if he's back with us. Uh, General Pannu, are you there with us now? Yes, today. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear you now perfectly. Uh, Left General Pannu, your, your take, sir, which we couldn't uh, uh, get last time. You know, I think this is one of the most significant events that I have noticed that if you build a tunnel of this stature through Sela, which completely opens out to Tawang, which is one of the most important and revered uh, uh, Tibetan uh, monastery, more than 450 years old. And uh, it is a paradise which used to be called hidden paradise. And one of the reasons why it was called hidden paradise is because there was no road worth its name which could take you there and more so forget about the tourism there the nefa as the name of this uh, state was uh, before uh, 1984 northern northeastern frontier agency the entire policy was not to let it develop and do not allow the tribals to come out or allow the foreigners to go in for the simple reason that keep it underdeveloped and keep it traditional as a result, in 1962, the area that we are talking about is most strategic because the area of the Wang has got border with Bhutan and it makes an enclave. Uh, south of the Wang is Bhutan, east of the Wang is Bhutan, and north is Tibet. And therefore, this entire area becomes completely isolated, and that is precisely what happened in 1962 that the Wang was overrun because a that we could not send our forces there secondly the chinese were very good in making infrastructure in fact there was a ladies engineer who used seven thousand labor and came down literally right up to the Wang who made this road it is much later that in 80s when i went there actually our units used to walk down because in 1962 we had to do this all on foot and therefore we walked down and we had to cross three ridge lines and the fourth one is the one beyond which was the Wang. And it is only in 80s when we realized that the Chinese are looking at further pushing us down. A forward policy was quickly announced, but the infrastructure was not handled. So today, now that the infrastructure has been handled, uh, we will no more have those kind of accidents. Actually, we have lost 
one of the most uh, important chief ministers, uh, Khandu Dorji, in the area of Sela, because none of them could actually drive a road quickly. So all these ridge lines used to be crossed by helicopters. And in 2011-12, I remember that the helicopter of Khandu Dorji was coming from Tawang and going down south towards Bombdila. Uh, it crashed into Sela. Uh, so therefore, today, because of weather conditions, you cannot access this area. And even for the troops to go and uh, take up positions there, infrastructure is extremely necessary. With Chinese now claiming this entire 90,000 square kilometers, sometimes they write Chinese names on these maps, they object to our prime minister, they object to any high-profile visit that takes place there. They continue to play reverse diplomacy in this area. So therefore, I think it is a huge demonstration that the prime minister himself is there to inaugurate this tunnel. We've not only demonstrated our will and resolve, but I think large infrastructure projects which are coming up, even the trans arunachal highway is going to come up. And therefore, going from Michipur to Bomdela to Sela now becomes a very, very interesting preposition even for tourism to open up in this area. Another uh, important thing is that the Chinese in 2020 claimed Saktain Sanctuary, which is south of Bhutan, which makes it south of Tawang. So therefore, if they are claiming Saktain Sanctuary, how do they expect that the Chinese would go there? Obviously, they have got indirect uh, references to Tawang belonging to them because they do not recognize the McMahon line, along with which today India has got its uh, line of defense. I remember in the 80s we had to build our own uh, track up to Tawang, uh, from Tawang to Bomdita, because the road which the Chinese had built was put to disuse for the simple reason that the Chinese should not again come and use that road. So whatever tracks was available were also broken down uh, in, in uh, post-60 debacle. So I think today it is reverse of what we had. I think the history has seen a new leaf turnover and this new infrastructure coming up with water villages now being given impetus by Prime Minister calling it the first villages, the infrastructure right up to the uh, line of actual control will not only make us capable, confident, but also will be able to defend our territories just in case there is a need because the Chinese are constantly pushing the militaries now for the further uh, south from Tibet, building their infrastructure and also making it now a military infrastructure which makes uh, Tawang and the entire Arunachal uh, northern borders uh, very vulnerable. And I think it's a welcome step that India is not only strong, but also has built its capacity to have tourism and integrate further the people of Arunachal Pradesh with the mainstream. In fact, the people of Arunachal Pradesh all speak Hindi, sing uh, Hindi songs. They are they are integrated. It is just that they were lacking infrastructure, which has been given to them. It's it, it's really a very significant uh, moment for India uh, today. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, but you know, what is the push now that will be needed uh, in the days ahead as well, Major General Devedi? Uh, what uh, you know, it's it's a continuance of the vision of the PM for this region. But what further is needed in this region and Arunachal in specific? <clears throat> question we need to be very clear on the chinese design you know since 2020 the chinese have actually violated the sanctity of land of actual control and uh, with the number of uh, instances that have taken place and i did an article only two weeks back in tribune that lac will be contested because the sanctity have been lost all the agreement we signed have been dumped into the dustbin therefore I think India has no choice whatsoever but to strengthen our posture on the line of actual control right from Leh Ladakh and into the Arunachal Pradesh. Second point is that Chinese claim Arunachal Pradesh and call it Zangnan. They brought in two laws. One was the you know, new defense law and second was the border law which actually is only to legislate their claims and also their encroachments. So I would only like to point out that government policy is on the right lines. Uh, having done number of tenures here, our initial policy was 
not to build anything as brought out even by Mr. Vijay and also by Professor Nalapat. Today, we need to defend our line of actual control right up to, and we need to have the capability to also go across in case the Chinese misadventure does not stop. The infrastructure is the key. And second point is the local development, what we call dual use. We got to ensure that infrastructure development also contributes to the development of the local area, local people, employment, and also quality of life. And to that extent, these projects must be dual use, well integrated into the development of the area. And my final point is the Chinese were hostile today, they are aggressive. Aggression can only be stopped with the equal force. As, as it is, we have about 60,000 troops on the both sides deployed in Leh Ladakh, and Chinese have been constantly improving their defensive posture along the LAC. I think infrastructure development, development of the border areas, and the political will and resolve is the only way forward. We need to have a very clear cut policy on China and our border management policy. Only then we can give befitting answer to the aggressiveness of the Chinese and its leadership. Ude. Yes, also, uh, you know, hoping, of course, uh, uh, that, you know, this, this particular, you know, push continues, uh, Professor Madhav Nalapad, but, it, you know, the Northeast focus uh, has been very crucial under Prime Minister Modi, hasn't it? Also, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the LOC was often favoured earlier and, and we would forget about the LAC, but that's something that, you know, we've, we've changed in the last few years and perhaps we need to continue to do so. Well, Prime Minister Modi recognized the fact that China and Pakistan are basically functioning uh, as a single unit. Pakistan army is, is under the domination uh, of the PLA. And if I may point out, the key to this to, to victory is escalation dominance. And the Prime Minister has worked very hard on two fronts. One is the Navy and the Air Force. You are seeing a buildup of the Air Force. You're seeing a buildup of the Navy. You're seeing the Navy, for example. I think more people have been rescued by the Indian Navy than by the other, the three the, the next three navies combined, whatever countries they come from. And you're seeing uh, immense uh, improvement in the capability of the Air Force. So it will be a, it is the escalation will have to take place on air, land, and sea and quite possibly in space. So that is one uh, one area. And the Prime Minister has certainly concentrated on that. It's a great pity, frankly, that there was a time not very long ago when if somebody in the Northeast could speak, uh, say, Hindi, oh, my God, what are you doing? You should, you know, he should be kept completely separate. Or she, the, I mean, this is an absurd thing which was done by a guy called Verrier Elwin, an anthropologist in the 1950s who Nehru was charmed by. And he said, don't touch them. Don't, uh, don't change their culture. Leave them be. They want uh, modern, uh, modernism. They've been wanting it since the 1950s, but we haven't given it to them. The second point that has been done is a, a, a block of allied countries. The Quad is a very important component of that. Joe Biden mentioned India, Australia, and Japan. He was talking about the Quad. And, it's, and he has also mentioned the Pacific Islands South, with a very, very important component of defense. Uh, uh, obviously, there will be Taiwan. So the point is that both in terms of, of expanding the alliance system. Now, you remember, Uday, in the 62 war, who stood by us? Nobody. 65 war, who stood by us? Nobody. 71 war, who stood by us? Nobody. Well, that's not going to happen this time, thanks to the diplomacy of the prime minister. And secondly, this time, if the Chinese attack in one manner, there will be an escalation and there'll be an escalation in a manner and place of India's choosing and the choosing of India and its newfound allies. So there's an immense accretion of escalation dominance. And for that, I think we have to give the credit to Prime Minister Modi. Yes, absolutely. Uh, OK, let me uh, quickly uh, get a closing comment then from Vijay Kranti as well. Vijay Kranti, uh, uh, which way forward now are we headed? Uh, what's the road ahead? Uh, you know, just now you asked this question earlier and uh, General Gwedi uh, uh, gave an answer, a part of it. I will add to it, our next step or what the, our future policy on uh, with vis-a-vis -vis China, on especially on Northeast, 
should be that we should stop talking to them on one kilometer this side or two kilometer that side or line of actual control or uh, Chinese claims on this area or that area. Indian government should now hit the right point, the actual source of the real problem. The real problem, the real source is that China occupied Tibet illegally in 1951. And overnight, they came to our borders and converted Indo-Tibetan border into India-China border. And their presence is illegal there. And they are using their presence in uh, uh, Tibet to make claims on our area, to be aggressive on uh, India, and even going to the extent of saying that Arunachal Pradesh is South Tibet. This is time the government of India should tell China that we don't recognize your presence in Tibet. You are illegally present there and we don't want you there. So if we have to discuss any border problem, we will not discuss with Beijing, we will discuss with Dalai Lama. You know, only then China will understand that they, they, their stand uh, is based on uh, illegal occupation of Tibet and they should not raise uh, this halagula about uh, Indian land on this side. So I think there is, there is need to be a political change, a policy change, a qualitative change on the part of Indian government. And unless India uh, challenges China's presence in Tibet and goes on accepting Tibet as a part of China, we will have it for eternity. The Chinese will be there on our borders and we will have a problem with them for eternity. So the only solution is hit them back, tell them the truth and ask them to move back out of Tibet. Only a peaceful Tibet is the guarantee for India's security. That's what I have to say. Okay, let's uh, leave it at that. My thanks to all of our guests for joining us. We've run completely out of time. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.